Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to this full moon in Virgo, Chitsky Chatsky. <laughs> My name is Eric. If you are new here, welcome. It is so wonderful to meet you. And if you're returning, what is up squad? So before we go any further, I just want to make sure that I'm very clear. If you are new and you're wondering why I am mentioning this full moon that is in Virgo and not Libra, this is because we here on Divine Conversations practice true sidereal astrology. If you're not familiar with that, I highly recommend that you do a bit of a Google search there are plenty of sources of information. One that would be really excellent for you to check out would be there's a website called masteringthezodiac.com. Just go ahead, put that into your web browser and check it out. There is a ton of information there. I, I That's personally my go-to when I need a quick uh, understanding of something and I don't have access to my system. Now, the main differences between true sidereal astrology and Western or tropical or mainstream astrology. First and foremost, we do include Ophiuchus here. Second of all, true sidereal astrology takes into account the fact that the planet shifts on its axis and has done so in the last 3,000 years or so since what we all understand as to be tropical or mainstream astrology was put into place. And finally, the most notable difference within true sidereal astrology is the fact that, um, well, actually, I'm sorry, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the planet has shifted on its axis. And because of that, everything has shifted or the placement of the planets shifts back about 21 to 22 degrees. Okay. So Technically, like I'll use myself for as an example, um, in Western or tropical astrology, I was born a Taurus, but actually in terms of how the planet has shifted and how what that means for us in relation to how things look in our sky from the earth, that actually means that the sun was in Aries when I was born. So I'm actually an Aries, not a Taurus. Okay, then finally, the last thing that it takes into account is the fact that um, all of the constellations are not... 30 degrees, not an even 30 degrees. Virgo actually is the largest constellation in our sky, or at least it looks like it. So that's a big notable thing. But I encourage you to stick around and give this video a listen, and you will be able to see what I mean when I show you guys the chart. Yeah? But anyway, welcome. If you're new, hi, it's great to meet you, and welcome back to everyone that is returning. Now, I really... um doing this chat here uh, was kind of a last minute thing because I knew the full moon was coming and I was preparing to do a reading for Patreon um, in terms of the full moon. But then I started sitting with it and I was looking at the chart and then I was influenced to start channeling messages for the collective. And with everything that was coming through, I was kind of feeling like it would be unfair just to only share it with the Patreon collective. So I am coming here to do a bit of a discussion, a little bit of a card pull. This is not really a card reading. However, I do have some cards here that I am going to shuffle up and I'm going to be pulling on as I talk through this, but it's not necessarily a an official card reading. This is more of a discussion. Yeah. So with all of that said, Let's get into this, guys. So this full moon in Virgo um, feels like a massive opportunity. And as I was sitting with the energies here and reading through everything and channeling, I was recognizing the correlation between some of the other things that have been happening in our life uh, over the course of uh, ever since, actually ever since uh, G August of last year. Now, why do I mention August of last year? Because... What seems to be happening in the sky, especially around the time of this full moon, is a culmination of what may have been kicked off for us in terms of personal transformation when Uranus, which is currently in Aries, started its retrograde motion. Now, if you guys have been following me here for an extended amount of time, you have heard me talk about Uranus retrograde through Aries for quite a while. And I was talking about how that was influencing a massive change for us in our sense of identity and our sense of selves. And this full moon is happening right before the sun 
uh, conjuncts with Uranus, but also right before, the day before, Mercury conjuncts with Uranus. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So the title that I channeled for this uh, full moon is, in fact, an open doorway to massive subconscious change. And let me show you why. Let's get, let me change the scene here and let me show you the chart. So what you have in front of you is the chart for April 16th at about noon. Um, April 16th is the day of the official full moon, okay? Um, and as you can see in the chart here, the moon is in, uh, is in Virgo and the sun is in Pisces. Now, <clears throat> already this is kind of a subconscious energy just because, or at least it has the potential to be a subconscious energy or have subconscious influence because we're talking about the moon, right? And the moon represents your subconscious, your feelings and emotions, maybe even psychic ability, but um, your subconscious programming and your subconscious reactions to certain situations in your life. Okay, so there's already a subconscious influence. But another layer of this subconscious influence is the fact that the sun here is in Pisces. And we just had, just a few days prior to this full moon, we had the conjunction between Neptune and Jupiter. Jupiter right here, Neptune right here. At, at the moment of this full moon, uh, Jupiter is at five degrees of Pisces, Neptune is at four degrees of Pisces. So we're this this conjunction right here between Neptune and Pluto. Uh, I'm sorry, Neptune and Jupiter is still kind of being felt, or potentially could still be felt, uh, because they're still within an orb of, or within the orb of influence of each other. Okay, um, all my astrology heads would know what that means, but technic but basically that means that they're still close enough to. E close enough to each other to be feeling the effects of that conjunction. Now, I highly recommend that you check out the live stream that I did surrounding that conjunction, which is in fact titled, um, The Towers Are Falling, Watch Them Crumble. I will do my best to remember to link all of that, put a, uh, a card up in the top right of the screen and link it in the description box below and even the pinned comment. But the big takeaway from that conjunction, the big thing that I was channeling and actually the big thing I was experiencing and I heard through a lot of you guys and some of my own friends, the uh, uh, big changes in your interpersonal relationships. Big changes socially are happening, whether this is just your friends or whether this is romantically, okay? And actually kind of both. Now, that was a big thing. That was a big aspect of the situation. And to be honest with you, as I was sitting here and channeling the energies for this full moon, a lot of that influence was coming up, okay? So, um, another aspect of this that I was picking up on, with the sun still being in Pisces, this is illuminating our subconscious, correct? But this also may be influencing a collective focus, which could be directly related to the Mercury-Uranus conjunction that happens the very next day, okay? April 17th. We'll get there. Don't worry. We'll cross that bridge when we get there as well. <clears throat> But there is a strong, uh, the energies that I was feeling for the collective here, a strong, a, uh, a strong social focus. And even as I was just shuffling the cards here, um, there was a card that popped out. It is the star, okay? And flanking the star would be the lovers and the four of swords, all right? There is a massive amount of healing that, is, or at least a potential for healing that is happening within the collective. And that healing has to do with you choosing, I'm sorry, right here, you choosing what is absolutely best for you, making your own decisions, the lovers and the four of swords, having the clear mind or having an open doorway to your subconscious mind to start to ask yourself certain questions. And one of those questions that really came through for the collective is especially in regards to or with regards to the sun still being in Pisces at this time, the big question here that I channeled for the collective was, who am I in relation to all of these people or in relation to the collective, okay? So there's a massive social focus in terms of the energies for the collective right now. And with this full moon, a full moon being a time period or a moment where the moon's energy is the strongest. And so this is a time for you to really put certain things into place, certain things into practice. The moon being in Virgo, here's the next card, the hermit. Um, 
This is a great time for you to set plans in motion, for you to set manifestations in motion, for you to make wishes of the universe, the star, right? But the wishes that you're making or whatever it is you could really be changing in your life is coming from a sense of personal reflection, awareness of self, the hermit, okay? So, um, like I said, many of us have uh, experienced upheavals which in, in terms of friends or interpersonal relationships, and this is a perfect time to set intentions to make the appropriate changes. Why is that? Well, let me go, let me say this first, but I channeled here first. For some, we are reshaping our identity in relation to the collective. Again, this question of who am I in relation to the collective? And this, this question is influenced by the sun being in, Perry, in, in Pisces, but then the sun about to transit or transfer into Aries within a few days. Let's see, let's advance this a little and see uh, when officially boop, boop. The sun crosses into Aries on the 21st of April, okay? So this is really the, like the last few, the last, the next few days, the next five days really is really the time for you to be asking yourself this question and to be putting anything and answer, any answers that uh, come to you in place, okay? So now the other thing that I want to say here is the energies of Virgo are super, super helpful here because whatever you want to put into place, you have the ability to do so with Virgo. Okay, Virgo is an energy of um, of healing. Uh, I'm hearing self mastery, yes, but the self mastery is an aspect of the situation here. But Virgo is very much about healing. Virgo is very practical. Virgo is an earth energy. Virgo is an also a mutable energy, and mutable energies are perfect for set for throwing into a situation and and saying, okay, how do we help this? How do we fix this? Because mutable energies can take up the shape of whatever ever needs to be taken up in any given situation and make it work, okay? So, um, okay, what the next cards that have come out here that I want to share with you, and this is something that I mentioned in the, uh, in the, um, in the Neptune, Plut uh, Neptune, Jupiter conjunction live stream, that whatever changes you find, whatever whatever is expanded for you, whatever comes into focus for you, especially interpersonally, with this full moon, it is a great time to be able to put it into place because the because the Virgo energies are really helpful in terms of this reconstruction. Now, the next cards that have come out here for the collective, we do have the world to the Empress to the Queen of Swords. Okay, the world representing a change in um, a, a closing of one cycle and moving on to the next, also representing desirable outcomes to be had okay the empress is representing growth and change and the queen of swords is representing the discernment to say what needs to change what stays what goes what new boundaries do we need to put in place and especially when it comes to boundaries virgo is an excellent energy to help you flush those out to help you develop those boundaries okay Alrighty, guys so let's move forward here now the sun is in Pisces currently, yes, okay, and will be for this full moon. And then it's going to be moving forward into Aries, right? But before that even happens, we have a conjunction between Mercury and Uranus. And this is where we really start to get into the influence of Uranus and what that has meant for us over the last almost year, okay, but it's really about, like, uh, Uranus went retrograde in mid-August of 2021, and we're in April of 2022, so that's about 10 months, right? Okay, so over this 10, and now Uranus is is direct at this time, so, okay, so Uranus was, was influencing a big change in our sense of identity during its retrograde motion with it being in Aries. And that was a really tumultuous time for a lot of us, okay? Now, Mercury on the 17th is about, will be conjuncting with Uranus. And so as I was reading through this and feeling all through this, I recognized that Mercury is aiding in this process that Virgo is providing you the structure or the energy for because Mercury rules Virgo. Mercury is the planet of communication and of learning and teaching um, and all that good stuff, right? What I'm feeling here with this conjunction between Mercury and Uranus, which is happening on the 17th, I'm feeling like there is a boost 
of energy and a boost of uh, uh, the potential for great revelation, great revolution in terms of your sense of self and how you are reconstructing your life in relation to the collective, in relation to the people around you, in the relation to how you identify in this world. And all of that is also related to how you have changed or how you have been influenced to change when, which was started when Uranus went retrograde and we experienced all of those upheavals in our lives that caused us to reshape ourselves, to question ourselves. And then once Uranus went direct, caused us to emerge as a brand new person okay uh this is okay hold on let me <laughs> let me collect myself here you may find uh, another message that i channeled here is that you may find that the changes in identity in relation to the collective or society is caused are directly caused by uranus about what uranus has influenced to change within you Mercury conjunct Uranus provides a boost in revolutionizing, reshaping, reconstructing, and rebuilding. But then on top of all of that, the moon represents subconscious energies. Pis uh, the sun is in Pisces right now. We had that conjunction between Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces. There is so much subconscious influence here, you guys, that this is really an open doorway for us to really change some subconscious beliefs, um, subconscious realities. Some of the things that you may have really been struggling with subconsciously are now you have a, a wide open doorway to really reshape those energies. Yes. Excellent. All right, guys, this is kind of a short and sweet message. Um, I don't really have anything else other than that. So why don't we take a few moments to pull some cards? Even though I didn't really intend for this to be an official card reading, a card pull, I actually do feel like I want to um, I want to get to the Moonology deck here and see what messages I can pull forward for the collective. Here we go. Five shuffles. One. So what messages do we have for the collective here? Two. Let's close this out. Three. Three. Four and five. Closing messages, please, Spirit, for this full moon in Virgo. Yeah, first card out is the full moon in Scorpio. It's time to release negativity. And Virgo, the energy of Virgo can really really help you with that because Virgo is a healing energy. It's all about healing. It's all about reshaping your life. It's all about your health and your wellness. Virgo rules the sixth house, which is your house of, <laughs> your house of health and wellness, your house of, um, of service to others, really, okay? Um, yeah, so the, so whatever negativity you've experienced, especially what, which, whatever negativity was expanded for you that, came, that was maybe even blown out of proportion, again, like I mentioned, in that uh, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction <clears throat> live stream, really f pay close attention to what happened in your life around the time of that conjunction, which I believe was on the 12th of April. Um, you know, in the surrounding days before and after, and even the day of the official, uh, the official conjunction, pay very close to t attention to what happened to you. And the, the biggest thing about this, you guys, that I'm feeling for the collective is that this is interpersonal, your interpersonal relationships, your friendships, your family, your, re your romantic relationships, okay? The sun is in Pisces right now. Pisces is an energy of the collective, is a, is a sign of collective energies, all right? There's a very social, heavy social influence for the collective here. But pay close attention to that and recognize what types of negativity you can release out of your life. What shift you can make in terms of that okay that was a very expansive time jupiter is a, the, a planet of expansion okay so a lot of things may it may seem like it was blown out of proportion at the time and yes as that was happening the moon was moving through leo so personal self-expression was probably heightened right okay and there may have been some really explosive situations Okay, but don't worry so much about that aspect. Instead, focus on what those situations meant for you. 
What are you able to take away from them, from that situation? And what re negativity can you release as a result of it? Yeah. What changes, what restructuring can you release? Focus also on the subconscious conditioning and or programming surrounding those situations. Anything that was blown out of proportion for you at that time, <clears throat> excuse me, is providing you with a deep understanding of what subconsciously could change because you have to remember that your subconscious is the root of where these reactions or these manifestations stem from. Okay. If you really want to make massive change in your life, you really want to be working with your subconscious mind and the subconscious energies. And we have a wide open doorway for that at this time. Use this energy of the full moon to really put the power and the vim and vigor behind these changes, okay? Two more cards here. Oh, look at this. Full moon in Virgo. You are good enough. Well, don't you just love that, you guys? I really love that. And finally, you have full moon in Cancer. A personal issue reaches resolution. That is absolutely what, I mean, that's literally what's going on here, you guys. It's time to release negativity. You are good enough. And a personal issue finally reaches resolution. But this reaches resolution again because you have a wide open doorway to your subconscious. For some of us here, this energy, this, this resolution or this personal issue is the fact of not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy enough. Okay, to have better, to be better, to want more. Yes. Six of wands, victory, victory, you guys. And the nine of cups is at the bottom of the deck. Personal happiness and contentment on a mundane level. Just being happy, being content with who you are, with where you are. There is a level here. I'm picking up for the collective in these energies. There is a level of um, pride and ego. But I will say, if you're making changes in your life, and this is actually connected to another um, message that I channeled for uh, the collective on my second channel, which is Mystic Unicorn Tarot, which is a love channel. And actually, I'm going to do, I will, I will link that video as well, because that's a very positive message, a very good one, because the message that came through with that was the King of Wands kept coming out, and there was an energy of feeling bold and confident enough to go forward towards what it is that you wanted to make the changes that you wanted. In some cases, for some of these interpersonal relationships, some of us felt like we wanted to release these situations a long time ago, but we wouldn't allow ourselves to do so, maybe because we felt like we weren't good enough. Okay, or we felt like we would be too prideful or too egotistic or something like that, but it's not even like that. You have the ability to make changes in your life if at, at any time, but especially when it comes in terms of releasing negativity. You don't ever have to feel on your high horse or better than someone or holier than thou to make changes that release negativity from your life. <laughs> what? I mean, like anybody that wants to tell you you're you're this, that, and the third just because you're making changes to be healthier can go, can kick rocks. And that's what Virgo, that's what the energy of Virgo is promoting here. A greater sense of health and wellness. And you are worthy of, you are good enough to have that, to achieve that. Yes? Anything else? To close out the reading, anything else you want to say, please, Spirit? The Two of Wands. It's time to make the decision. It's time to go in the direction that you've been always wanting to go in. It's time to pursue that project. Ah, and the Ace of Cups. Last messages. In terms of, yep, okay, good. And overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Three of Pentacles. So this is all about, oh, sorry. This is all about self-mastery. Okay, building yourself up, reshaping yourself, doing better, doing what's right for you. Two of Wands, Queen of Wands now, which is funny because in that other reading that I that is pinned um, in the description box below and the comments, um, the, the King of Wands was the focus for that. Now we have the Queen of Wands coming here, coming in. The final message for the collective in terms of this full moon is 
make the decisions in terms of what your true alignment is. And remember, you are loved unconditionally. So love yourself enough to go in the direction, to make the proper changes, to go do the proper things that you want to do that are in alignment with your truth, with your soul, with your authenticity. Why? Because you are good enough. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Happy full moon to you. I'm sending you all so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading, our next session, our next conversation very, very soon. Yes? Beauty must. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>